Gentlemen, what is going on today? My name is Ryan Mickler. I'm the host and the founder of the Order of Men podcast and movement. Welcome here. Welcome back. If you're new to the show, what I want to do on this Friday Field Notes is give you some information, some ideas, and thoughts that I've been thinking about from throughout the week that are going to serve you as a man more effectively. It's going to help you as a father, a husband, a business owner, a community leader, really just any facet of your life. So today we're going to talk about uh, daily optimization how you optimize your day and how if you can stack enough optimized days together, that starts to create long-term wins. And in turn, you can optimize your entire life by focusing on the daily unit. So we're going to talk about that. Uh, before I do, just want to mention my friends over at Origin USA making some big moves. They're getting a, a hunt line up and running. They've just inked a very large deal with their Jocko Fuel Division, which is uh, their discipline, energy, cognitive enhancing drink, their joint warfare, which is obviously good for the joints, uh, their super krill, which is also good for the joints. And then they've got their milk, which is their protein, all the supplements you might need. You can check it out there. And then they've got, of course, their durable goods. That's their boots. That's their denim. And hundred percent is, is made in America. It's all sourced and made in America. So if you're interested in boots, jeans, supplements, whatever it may be, originusa.com. Use the code order at checkout to save some money. All right, guys, let's talk about optimizing your day, which in turn will lead you to optimizing your life. Uh, fortunately, I've been pretty good at this over my lifetime. Um, not always perfect, not always dialed in, but somewhat effective, which has led me to some tremendous results. And when I've deviated from what I'm going to share with you today, uh, it's, it leads to if you stack enough deviation uh, to obviously poor performance and poor results. But it's very simple, and I don't want you to overlook the power and importance of what I'm going to share with you today just because it's simple. I would challenge you to take the next 30 days and do these five or six things that I'm going to share with you, and then go back after and evaluate whether the last 30 days changed. If it did, great. Keep doing it. If it didn't, tweak, adjust, fix it where you can. But I can assure you that your life is going to get better if you do this. Number one, start your day. If you want to optimize the day and make the most of every single moment, start your day the night before. All right. When you wake up at five or six or seven or nine or whatever time you wake up, your day should be entirely planned out, entirely mapped out. The only thing that you're going to need to change is if something happened throughout the night, or maybe you got an email uh, that, that needs to be addressed, uh, or you had a little emergency or a fire that needs to be put out. But really, your, your day should be almost entirely planned. I'm talking 90, 95, 98% completely planned. And I found that if I have my next day planned out the night before, then I get up enthused. Uh, I get up with energy and excitement for the day because I know exactly what needs to be done and everything's in place from my daily plan, my computer, my office is set up. Uh, if I'm going to the gym, the clothes are out, the drink's ready to go. I've already looked at what the workout is. There's very little guesswork. Because the more friction you put between you and optimizing your day, the less likely it is you're going to get it done. And the more likely you're going to get side railed, uh, distracted, and, and, and fall off the wagon because everything's coming at you from advertising and demands for your time and attention and phone calls and emails and requests and sales calls, soliciting. All of this comes at you a thousand miles an hour. You need to know what you're going to do from day one. So what I do at the end of every single day is I get my battle planner out. I'll show this to you if you're watching on YouTube, youtube.com slash order of man. I've always got my battle planner right here within arm's reach. I get this out. I do uh, my checklist. So I'm going to go through and see what got done, what didn't get done. And I'm going to roll over tasks that did not get completed uh, to the next day. So I'm ready to go in the morning. So guys, plan out your day the night before. Don't ever leave your office. And don't overclose your eyes without planning out that day and thinking about how the, that, that current day went so you can make it better tomorrow. All right, number two is when you wake up, have a morning routine. Have a, and I, a routine is good. I would even go so far as saying have a ritual, right? If you have a ritual in place that's completed every single morning, you're going to be more likely to do it. It's going to be much more efficient. You know it's going to produce results. You've already evaluated it. If it isn't working, you can tweak and adjust along the way. But a morning ritual is something that you can do every single day without fail. And you know it's going to set you up 
on the right path. If you're not already doing a morning ritual, then I would suggest that you do it. Obviously, get up, get going, map out what you're going to do. It starts the night before, but my morning ritual looks like this. I wake up and depending on what morning it is, uh, I don't, I try to stay off the phone. First thing, I don't want to get on the phone and check emails and all that kind of stuff because then I'm putting myself at the whim of what other people want from me. So don't, no phone. Uh, and then I go straight into uh, exercise again, depending on the morning. So if I'm going to go train jujitsu, I'm going to get up, I'm going to change all my clothes are out from the night before no phone. I'm going to get some water. I'm going to hydrate because I went eight hours plus without any water. So I'm going to get some water in my system. I'm going to get those joints in the body moving again, no emails, no phone, nothing like that. I'm going to go do my workout. I'm going to come home. Uh, and one thing I do with my family is we do a morning meeting. So we get together every morning at 7.30 in the morning and we discuss what the day's like. And that could take us two minutes one day and 11 minutes the next day. We don't have a set time on that, but we do that every single morning. And it gets all of us as a family unit on the same page, working towards the same goals and knowing where all of us are going to be. So that's very simple. All right. It, I've, I've seen people have morning routines that are like, two hours or three hours and they have 17 steps. No, for me, it's get up, hydrate, exercise, morning meeting, go shower, clean up, change, get ready for the day. And then the next part of my morning routine is to come in and get out that battle planner and look at it from the night before and start planning and mapping out my, my current day. And that might take me about 10 minutes. I'm just going to review for the most part, but that's the time where I start checking emails, messages, so that I can plug in anything that needs to be plugged in into my battle planner that may have come up overnight or needs to be adjust adjusted uh, or changed on my calendar. Okay, so again, start the night before, morning ritual. And then number three is don't negotiate with your calendar. Now, I just told you that if something comes up overnight or there's a little fire or the priority changes, then I may have to adjust my calendar, which is fine. Okay, and I'll tell you how you do this in a minute, but I live and die by my calendar, All right? If it's, on, if it's not on my calendar, it's hit or miss. If it is on my calendar, it's going to get done. My wife has access to my calendar. Uh, my assistant has access to my calendar. Both of them plug things in, whether it's date night with my wife or uh, Brandy, my assistant may say that she needs uh, or set up a podcast for me or, or a phone call with somebody. So she'll throw that in the calendar. Uh, so I live and die by the calendar and it's much more effective when you do. I know people who don't even have calendars. Maybe they just jot it down. So I don't even know how they do it. But what I would suggest is that you don't negotiate it with it. Do all of your negotiation with your calendar before you put it on the calendar. Because once it's there, once it's inked on the calendar, it's a done deal. Now things are going to come up, right? Fire, uh, little fires are going to happen. Uh, one of your kids is going to break their arm. Your wife is going to have an emergency. Um, your boss has a new priority at work. Uh, a client calls and takes precedent over something else you might be doing. Some of that stuff comes up. So here's what I would suggest to you. Always build buffers into your calendar. This is how you do not negotiate with your calendar, but you place those buffers in place. So I typically work in hour blocks. So 60 minutes. Um, but what I do is I always put a buffer before and after that means that if I have a call, for example, at 10 o'clock or a podcast, that, that meeting block is actually nine 30 to 11 30, half an hour before half an hour after. And so my next meeting, if I have an hour long meeting at 10, my next meeting cannot take place until 11 30. And that allows for time that maybe a conversation goes longer or there's a couple of emails I need to check between appointments, or there's a follow-up to a conversation I have that I need to address and be aware of. It gives me time. When I get impatient and frustrated is when I'm, I don't have enough time to do what I need to be doing and I'm rushed. So I built this buffering system in years and years ago, and I can tell you it's a lifesaver. And some people might say, well, if you have all this buffer time, is that just downtime? No, not at all. I'm not saying don't be effective. Don't be productive in that time. I'm saying you can be the most productive because you got a half an hour window to crank out 10 emails or 20 emails, uh, or maybe read a portion of a book or take some notes in your journal or make a few calls or send your wife 
a text to tell her you love her or whatever it is, you've got that buffer and that downtime to do it. And it keeps all of your, your uh, meetings intact on the calendar. Next, guys, learn to delegate. Okay, we have to learn to delegate. Everything needs to get done, right? But you don't need to do everything. And that's what so many men struggle with in their lives. They think that, well, they, they even say things like, well, you know, if you want it done right, you have to do it yourself. That isn't true. You're just saying that because you're not willing or able to take the time to find somebody who could do something better than you can do. Um, I, I mentioned Brandy and I, I use the term assistant. That's probably not the right term because she's so much more than that within the organization. Um, and, she, and she does certain things about this business significantly better than I can ever do. And so I used to think, well, I have to do it all. No, she's going to handle a lot of that because she's talented with it. She's good at it. Uh, it takes it off my plate to focus on the things that I'm talented with and good with. And then it allows everything to keep moving because it all has to get done. So guys, get out of the trap and the mindset. If you want to optimize your day and optimize your life of thinking that you need to do everything, you don't. Okay, you should, as my friend Bedros Koulian says, focus on your, I believe the term he uses is zone of genius. And so my zone of genius is podcasting. I'm not saying that I'm God's gift to podcasting. I'm saying that's what I'm uniquely gifted and qualified of doing. And that's what I enjoy doing and want to do. But I don't want to send emails. I don't want to follow up. I don't want to run our store. I don't want to edit the podcast. Chad does that. Okay. I don't want to video the podcast. Todd does some of that. Like I've got a team around me when we run events. I don't want to do all the logistics. I don't want to look for the porta potties and rent those things. I don't want to figure out how to how to get a hold of everybody and and, and points of contact and emergency con and application. I don't want to do that. So Chris Gatchko, our event coordinator, does that. And all of those people that I've brought on in these departments, even within our Iron Council, I don't want to do membership and billing stuff. I want to talk with the guys. I want to inspire them. I want to entertain them. I want to educate them and inform them and help them become better men. I don't want to input their credit card information or, you know, like refund a payment if, if something got out of whack. So we have Drew and he takes care of that, right? So we have a team in place to handle all of this. And this is how I get so much done. And you might look and think, oh my goodness, Ryan's getting all this done and look at all these podcasts and look at all these guests and look at the Iron Council. Yes, all of that is getting done. I am doing very little of it. I'm, I'm, I'm the... I'm the face, okay, and, and the voice maybe. And then we have all of these other little components and everybody else, all these talented players in the right place to do these things that are going to keep the machine running. Get over yourself. Let go of the ego so you can win. Isn't that what we want? You can't win on your own. Okay, life, business, relationships, those are not individual sports. Those are team sports. Get your teammates involved. All right, number five, this is actually along the same lines, but even before, maybe I should have made this number four instead of number five, learn to say no, okay? You don't need to do everything. You don't owe everybody a response. You don't have to make other people's problems your priority. You don't have to do favors at every turn. Now, of course, you want to be helpful. We should be charitable with our time and our attention and our services. We should strive to serve other people. We should give back. We should donate to charity. We should get involved with our community. Yes, absolutely. But you can't do it all. It's just not possible. And when you say yes to something that you know you don't want to do or know you shouldn't be doing, then what you're actually doing is simultaneously saying no to the great opportunities where you could genuinely serve and help other people. So you don't need to respond to every email. Not everybody needs a text back. I actually had to learn this the hard way on social media because I used to believe that if somebody reached out, like I need to respond back to everybody. And I've gotten to the point now, I, I just can't do that. And if I spend all of my time responding to every comment, responding to every message, hitting everybody back, it's, I just won't accomplish what I want, which is to have powerful conversations that are ultimately designed to serve you guys as men. So learn to say no. Here's the trick. It's hard at first, but every time you say no, it gets easier. 
The hardest time to say no is the first time. But when you learn to assert yourself and you learn what's important and you learn what's not important and you say no as often as you can in the appropriate places, then it's going to become easier for you. And then with whatever's left, either you do it or delegate, which was point number four. Okay. And the last point that I'm going to make for you for optimizing your day, again, a very short list, but it doesn't need to be 27 things you need to do. It's very simple. If you just implement these six things, I guarantee your life's going to get better. Not today, not this week, the rest of the year, the rest of your life, do this. All right. The last one is close down your day. All right. Every Paragraph has a, a start and a stop. Every book has a, a beginning chapter and the end, right? Every season has a beginning and an end. Like every day should have a beginning and an end. We don't want our days to roll over indefinitely forever because if you don't close out your day, you're not putting a period at the end of the sentence. Okay, you're not putting a the end at the end of that chapter, that book. Close out your day. Ask yourself, wrap it up. How did this go? What did I get done? What didn't I get done? Where was I good? Where was I effective? Where did I say no? How did I free up time? How did I serve other people? Who did I care about today? Who did I make feel important? How did I move my business forward? How much more money did I make? What debt did I pay off today? How much debt better does my grass look because I took a little time and mowed it this afternoon? Like, Go and review your day. And then put a period on it. And the way that you do that is you wash your hands of the day. You said, I did what I could do. Maybe it was good. Maybe it wasn't good. Maybe I could do it better. Great. That's where you can roll it over to tomorrow. So if you get to the end of your day and you're capping out your day and you're like, man, <clears throat> I was like 80% productive and this 20% of activities that I didn't get to, I couldn't do it because time wouldn't allow for it, but I'm going to do that tomorrow. And then jot it down in your planner, whatever planner you're using, jot it down. And then what that allows you to do is to be home and to be present and to be focused on your wife and your children or your charitable activities or your neighbors or your friends and family and the barbecue you're going to go to. It allows you to be fully present in those moments. I had a friend who at the end of the day, he would drive home and he would turn off the radio. He would just sit in silence. And that gave him some buffer time to think about how he was going to serve his family. And then he would get into his driveway and he would close the door behind him, his car door, and he would walk to the front door. And at the front door, there was a, a big tree with a large branch that hung out from that tree. And he would literally reach up, grab the tree, that branch rather, and he would hang there for about 10 or 20 seconds every day. And he told me about this. I asked him why he did that. He says, I'm literally leaving my troubles at the door because I want to be there with my family. Well, he can do that because he has a system in place. And part of that system, part of closing out his day, is hanging on that tree branch and letting everything go. Now, you can't just do it because you want to do it. You have to have a system in place to let it go. That's where a planner comes into play, a tool like that. So you can actually jot it down and forget about it and know that it'll be there waiting for you tomorrow. Guys, this is simple stuff. Very simple. So simple that so many of you will overlook it and you'll you know, buy 17 books this year about how to optimize your day and to make the most of every single moment. And you'll go to the conferences and read all the courses and all the books and listen to all the podcasts. You don't need that. You just need to do these six things religiously, continually, consistently. Start your day the night before. Do that today. You're listening to this. I don't know if it's eight o'clock a.m. or p.m., but tomorrow starts right now, today. Number two, do that morning ritual. Experiment with it. You don't need 17 things, okay? You need like four things. Wake up, hydrate with water, maybe get a healthy bite to eat, do your exercise, have your family meeting or your individual meeting, have a, a ritual for the way that you get ready from your shower to the way you brush your teeth and everywhere in between, uh, and then get on with your day into your plan. Number three, don't negotiate with your calendar. Negotiate beforehand, but once it's on your calendar, lock it in, live and die by the calendar and create those buffers half an hour before and after meetings so you're not just killing yourself because you're running from meeting to meeting to meeting. Uh, number four, 
delegate task. You don't have to do it all. You shouldn't do it all. And those people who say, if you want it done right, you have to do it yourself are wrong. If you want it done right, you have to have the right person to do it. That might be you and it's likely somebody else. So learn to delegate. Number five, learn to say no so you can say yes to the things that are important. And number six, close out your day. It's that simple, guys. It's very, very simple. Don't overlook its simplicity and don't think it can't serve you. Do those six things today, tomorrow, the next day, next week, next month, next year, forever, and your life will be better because you're optimizing the thing entirely within your control, your calendar, your schedule, the way the things go. Granted, things are going to come up, but the plans I gave you are going to allow for some of those buffers and those hedges. Uh, but if you optimize your day, I guarantee you're going to optimize your life. All right, you guys, go get after it. Oh, by the way, this is coming out on Friday. So we're having the weekend. Your weekend should be optimized too. A weekend isn't cheat time. It isn't a time to deviate from what you want. It might adjust a little bit, right? You're not going to go into work probably on a Saturday or Sunday. You might be going to church instead, for example, but that doesn't allow you to deviate from the path. It just means you adjust the path a little bit. Stay on the path on Saturday and Sunday, all right? It's not just a five-day-a-week thing. It's a seven-day-a-week thing. All right, guys, get out there, take action, and become the man you are meant to be.